and welcome to this new video. Today I want to show you how to bypass the app protect uh, bit fr from NRF in the NRF52832 and the NRF52840. And this chip is widely used in yeah small smartwatches or cheap smartwatches like the P8 or the Magic 3 and also in the Pine Time and a lot of more watches. And to yeah bypass the protection, we only need an ESP32 module and one of these small MOSFET modules you can find in the web. And yeah, in theory, you can also use another N-channel MOSFET, but it needs to fit and needs to be driven correctly. And on this module, yeah, the driving circuit is already there. This work is um, found by limited results. He managed to yeah, bypass the app protect bit via the power glitching of the DEC1 pin, so the yeah, main core rail of the NRF chip. And the yeah, N channel MOSFET is used to do this glitching. And I am going to show you how it will work with the ESP32 and how it is also used to yeah just dump the flash directly into the ESP32 and yeah use it further to reverse it or to reflash the NRF. Here I have set up everything that is needed to do a successful glitch. So we have here an NRF52840 dongle which is yeah, running this simple blink example. We have the N-channel MOSFET and the ESP32. The ESP32 is connected um, with two GPIOs to the SWD port of the NRF chip. And one pin goes to the N-channel MOSFET. And from the N-channel MOSFET, you can see this very thin wire, which is going to the DEC1 pin. This is by far the hardest part of the whole procedure as it is needed to solder to the yeah, very small pin you can see here on the NRF. And if you look into the schematics of the NRF dongle, you will see the yeah, um, capacitor is named and mostly it is always on this position or around that area as there's also the DEC1 pin located. I am also having here the Magic 3 watch where you can also see the pin being at a similar place and here we have two capacitors and it is here the yeah, lower one and there we need to connect to one side of it with a very small wire and the other side to the switching side here of the yeah, MOSFET. Also, you can see here the this red wire is connected to the VDD pin of the NRF. This is used to yeah, reset the NRF and repower it. It is also important to not exceed the ampere ratings of a GPIO as the NRF is fully powered of one of the GPIOs. You may want to yeah, use two GPIOs to power the NRF or use an external transistor to have more available switching power. I'm also having here this wire also connected to the same M MOSFET pin and into my oscilloscope and also the power pin of the NRF also to another channel as a trigger for the oscilloscope. This is used to find the correct spot. This makes it very simple to find it, but it's also possible to do it blindly. It will just take a bit longer then. So I'm now going onto the PC. So 
So here you can see that the ESP32 firmware is running and I showed in an earlier video on how to set it up and also in the repository I am linking down below you can see how yeah or read how to set it up and to get it into this state. So if I now click on initialize SWD we can see here it has successfully yeah, read the core ID of the NRF and also that the NRF is locked. This is yeah, just as the demo. I locked it before. And here on the top we can set a delay or a glitch delay. And this is the yeah, most part to be edited. This can be also changed while the glitching is running. And I am now, yeah, would enable the glitcher just to so show what is happening. The delay will increase on its own and it will retry till it's successful. So I am now enabling the glitcher. And you can see on the oscilloscope that many attempts are made and also the LED is blinking here. And for every blinked LED, one new try is made on the ESP. Here you can see that the um, very short sync or the glitch pulse is made and it changes in position and in length and will try out many different positions. You can see in the web server at what delay it is currently and it will yeah, run continuously. So I'm now just um, making the delay way later than needed just to show what we searching for and if we now look onto the oscilloscope we can see this small voltage drop in the DEC line. If we go further out we can see that yeah it takes about the 2000 um, microseconds till this delay uh, till this drop is and yeah we want to have the glitching moment it at the exact point before this um, voltage drop so if I'm now going to let's say 2055 microseconds we can see that is it is at the erect uh, at the exact moment we wanted to and now we just have to wait till it yeah successfully hits the um, yeah, app protect reading to bypass the lock protection. And yeah, you can see that now the glitching has stopped and the power is always on. If we now look on the PC, we see that um, the NRF info show, shows that an NRF is connected and the lock pit is set but it's still readable so we can see that we have yeah successfully read that the chip has one megabyte of flash it is the 52840 and no soft device is flashed that is true because the blink example is running without any soft device and now we can also yeah just do some normal swd stuff like reading that the chip is unlocked we could read a register and see that we can yeah, successfully read the memory. I now made two functions to dump the UECR and the full flash. If a glitch is successful, you could also do your own um, yeah, dumping size and so on. I am now going to dump the U. ECR and it will yeah, save it on the web server or the web space of the ESP32 and there we can also download it to just save it. I am now not going to do a full flash dump as this would take too long. I'm just dumping the first uh, four kilobytes or the yeah, hex 1000 into the file name file dump and yeah, I'm just starting it. It will show the percentage and yeah, if it's done, we should have another file here in the 
um, web server, which is called file dump. This file I'm going to download and we can open this with a hex editor. I'm using the hxd again and we can see that we have a yeah, flash dump and as this is just the small blink example, it's very short. We can now also yeah, download the UE, UICR and open this as well in the hex editor. Um, okay, there seems to be something wrong. Ah, yeah, the offset value is not correctly set in the Arduino code. So that is here at the bottom. And we can see that the full flash is here, but we need to start at this position. Ah, no, not the other way around. We have the UICR that is wrong, so we need to dump it at this position. This is where the UICR starts and by selecting this offset it will read from there and yeah, then this size. So I am going to upload this again and then yeah, it will read correctly and it will also be online like that. So as you can see the whole thing is quite simple and the yeah, hardest part is as mentioned to solder the DEC1 pin and also to find the correct glitching point but you can just let it run for a few minutes until it hits so you find the correct spot and now the device is rebooted I can initialize the NRF again and you can see that it is locked so I'm just yeah, enabling the glitcher again waiting it for it to be successful which should not take too long as we have the correct spot already and yeah if it then correctly like this we can dump the UECR again it is successful we can download it again save it and then open it and there we see it is successful and this is the UECR and yeah that's basically it and this is how you yeah, bypass the app protection from the NRF 5.2 series and the chip's more secure. Okay, bye.